Happy Saturday morning, everyone. Wow, what a spectacular view right now. We've got blue skies and a beautiful day ahead of us. However, we do have some storms that are coming through this afternoon. We've been warned about it for a couple of days now. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Anusha Roy. Mark Salinger has the morning off. We're going to head right over to Corey Reppenhagen. And Corey, you were saying if anyone is barbecuing outdoor plans this afternoon, you're going to want to pay particular attention. Yeah, exactly, because you're looking at your, your favorite weather app, you know, and it says 30 to 40 percent chance of rain, and you're thinking, I could... I think I could get a barbecue in there, but the problem is the rain is going to evaporate as it falls out of these clouds in the dry air, and it's going to spread a lot of wind gusts out. So if you don't get hit by one of those little rain showers, you could get hit by the, by the winds from them. So there will be an impact for you here this afternoon, but look at the morning hours. We, we are continuing to look at these clear blue skies over most of the front range here, and that'll continue. The temperature finally starting to rise there up to 57 degrees. That's why, you know, love the eight o'clock hour. That's when you see these temperatures really start to make the upward movement here. We'll be making our way into the middle 70s here in the Denver metro area. Here's that storm system. It's really a trough of low pressure that's going to roll right across the state bringing scattered showers to the high country, isolated uh, rain showers here to the front range. Here's your Denver forecast as we go through the day. Stays pretty calm and pleasant all the way up until about two o'clock. That's when we start to see the changes and our best chance to pick up one of these rain showers or thunderstorms is in between two and 6 p.m. And here is your temperature uh, forecast for the rest of the state. Temperature wise, we're looking really good, especially out in the eastern plains with those 80s and 90s. All right, thanks so much for that. New overnight, as you're getting your morning started, Denver police is now investigating multiple crashes in the metro area that could impact your morning commute. One of those crashes happened at Santa Fe and Mississippi. Northbound Santa Fe in both directions of Mississippi had to be shut down. Another crash was at Colorado and Alameda. Officials again warning of delays in that area. A third at 44th and Federal. Federal had to be closed in both directions. Multiple people were taken to the hospital. We will continue to update you as we learn more ourselves. Right now, Denver police are also asking for the public's help to track down a bank robber. They say the man in these surveillance pictures walked into the U.S. Bank on South Monaco Thursday afternoon, demanded money, and then took off. It's not clear how much cash he took. If you know who he is, you could be eligible for a reward if you call Crime Stoppers. A 15-year-old boy has now been arrested, accused of shooting another teenager in Greeley. Police found the 17-year-old boy Wednesday night at an apartment complex on 24th Street, a couple blocks north of 34th. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police later arrested the 15-year-old boy at a home about a mile away. He is now facing attempted murder, among other charges. Nearly a year and a half after the death of an inmate inside the Adams County Jail, which the local coroner called a homicide, the Sheriff's Department has yet to start its own investigation. Nine News Investigates has been asking what's been taking so long for months now. This is about the death of Arthur Royball inside the county jail in late 2022. He died after deputies restrained him to a gurney and the face down, something that county policy specifically forbids. The Sheriff's Department tells us it's waiting for a criminal review to conclude before it starts its own internal investigation, which means the deputies involved are still on the job. A former Douglas County Sheriff told us that he believes the delay is a mistake. 18 months too long to wait to start an IA investigation. That Without an exceptional reason, yes, it is. In my opinion, is is not good service to your community, it's not good service to your agency, and it's not in best practice. The Adams County Sheriff tells us its own policy calls for it to wait until the criminal review is over. The district attorney in Adams County told us through a spokesperson, its criminal review is still not ready to be publicly released and it's not clear what's causing that delay. May is dedicated to raising awareness about strokes, and doctors say every year there are hundreds of thousands of patients. Nine News' Brianna Clark is joining us in studio, and Brianna, the longer it takes to spot a stroke, the harder it is to recover. Yeah, that's right. Two million brain cells die every minute that passes. So when we think of someone suffering a stroke, most of us picture our grandparents or even an older adult. But doctors say it can actually happen at any point and at any age. I think the youngest stroke patient I've ever personally treated was seven years old. Uh, and the oldest I've personally treated was 106. So 
there's quite a range. Uh, typically, it's more going to be in the 70s to 90s age range, but it can happen at any age. Seven years old. Can you imagine? Again, early intervention is key. When someone is suffering a stroke, for the most part, they don't know what's going on which is why it's crucial for the people around them to be able to spot the warning signs. Take a moment, grab your kids. Everyone learn this together. It's a simple trick that could save someone's life. All you need to remember is be fast. So is the person's balance off? How is their eyesight? Did their vision suddenly become blurry? Is their face drooping on one side? If it is, ask them to smile. If they can't, that is a sign. Is one arm weak or numb? And is their speech slurred? If a person shows any of these symptoms, even if they go away, that's when it's time to call 911. I've spoken to nurses who say they've seen patients go from being partially paralyzed to being back at work a month later, like nothing happened, all because someone spotted the warning signs of a stroke. Reporting live, Brianna Clark, 9 News. Yeah, it's an acronym that's saving lives. Thanks so much for raising some awareness. We appreciate it. The city of Uvalde held a vigil marking two years since the shooting at Robb Elementary. A large crowd gathered at the candlelight vigil to remember the 19 kids and two teachers who lost their lives on that tragic day. Other events of remembrance include a bell ringing and a butterfly release. In the two years since the shooting, 21 bills to reduce gun violence and bring justice to the impacted families have been brought to Texas lawmakers, but none of them have been heard in the state Senate despite the family's pleas. Meantime, families of the Uvalde victims are taking more legal action. They are suing Instagram's parent company, as well as the maker of the video game Call of Duty and the gun company that created the rifle used in that shooting. The lawsuits accuse those companies of promoting and creating content that is designed to glorify violence. It's not clear exactly how much money the lawsuits are looking for. In response, Activision, the company behind Call of Duty, said that millions of people enjoy video games without turning to horrific acts. The other two companies have not yet responded to requests for comment. One of Colorado's most conservative congressional districts is up for grabs this election year. A primary race next month will likely determine the winner. On Thursday, we get to hear from the people hoping to represent Congressional District 4. This is a huge district. It covers eastern Colorado along with Parker, Castle Rock, and Loveland. Six Republican candidates are running to fill Congressman Ken Buck's seat. That list includes Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, who moved to the district, former State Senator Jerry Sonnenberg, State Representative Richard Holtorf, former State House House Minority Leader Mike Lynch, former conservative talk radio host Deborah Flora, and former U.S. Senate candidate Peter Yu. Here's a preview of what to expect this week. Kyle, set the stage before you get on the stage. Sure. Lauren Boebert, five challengers. Is it safe to label Boebert the front runner here? Yeah, I think it's safe to label her the, the front runner in the sense that she has near universal name ID amongst Republicans and she has a tremendous fundraising advantage over the other candidates. It's also pretty clear from some public opinion polling in Colorado that a lot of Republicans have soured on Lauren Boebert, that they just, they're tired of her shtick, right? You know, um, and that they're looking for an alternative. But again, you've got five other options in that race and are all of the people who are tired of Lauren Boebert's shtick, would you stick to somebody else or are they going to disperse and allow her to walk through, potentially winning just 30% of the vote? You can watch that debate live on 9 News at 6 p.m. on Thursday. We will also be streaming it on 9 News Plus. Kyle Clark, Marshall Zellinger will be moderating. The election will be Tuesday, June 25th.